picture? Well, I'm here at the Packard factory to get information for salesmen on the new Packard chassis. And this is one of the men in the engineering department. He's going to give me all the information. That's right. How would you like to start with a break? Fine. What can you tell me about it that would make salesmen better qualified to sell the 22nd Series Packard? Well, here, I'll show you. You see, some manufacturers use what is called an H-type frame. Some use the X. Packard uses both. I don't mean to appear too ignorant, but is that good? Well, I should say it is. The section modulus of each part of the frame, including the X and the H, is a direct index to the frame's functional load-carrying ability. Well, now, wait a minute. You lost me there. What does all this mean to salesmen when they're selling a Packard car, for instance? Let's put it this way. You've probably seen the results of a poor or sagging foundation in a building. I sure have, right at home. Well, a poor foundation in a car has the same effect. A weak frame causes rattles and may eventually result in body cracks or misalignment of the wheels, which reduces tire life. And a weak frame would give a feeling of instability on the road. That's why Packard uses both the H and X principles in its frame construction to provide the utmost in strength, durability, and freedom from service costs for Packard owners. But only the finest is good enough for Packard. So, in addition, we use Husky subrails for the engine mount and a massive welded steel box section to support the front running gear. Yes, this standard frame is our guarantee to Packard owners that their motor car investment rests on the firmest of foundations. I didn't think there was that much to say about frames. Well, there's much more. But the features we covered should be of value to salesmen because they are features that benefit Packard customers. But here... I'd like to show you the absolute pinnacle in frame engineering. You mean you have a better one? Yes, even better. It's a convertible frame. As you probably know, the lack of a steel top on convertibles means that the frame has to be much stronger in order to provide a solid foundation for the car. Well, this frame is so solid and rigid that the car has actually been driven on three wheels. That's like taking a main support out from under a bridge. But leave this sort of testing to the experts. Tell your salesman not to try. After such punishment, and with the wheels still off, the doors fitted and worked perfectly. Assurance to Packard owners that bodies, chassis, and doors will stay in perfect alignment for a lifetime of service. And here's how we made the convertible frame so strong. We added extra outrigger brackets to support the body. Then we added heavier subrails. Then we took quarter-inch steel plate and welded it to both the top and bottom of the X. Well, is all that strength necessary? If you've had to put up with a bucking, squeaking, and rattling in ordinary convertibles, I'm sure you'd say it was. Oh, I get the point. We started out to design and build the finest convertible chassis on the road. And that's it. There's no other convertible chassis that can touch it. But let's talk about smooth riding. That brings up the matter of unsprung weight. They're burning the midnight oil at some other places trying to lick this. But this Packard chassis has the answer built into it. Well, what is unsprung weight? Unsprung weight is any weight located between the springs and the road. Being located below the springs, it's not cushioned by them. All engineers know that the less the unsprung weight, the smoother the ride. Packard, and most manufacturers, use independent front wheel suspension to keep unsprung weight in the front end at a minimum also to enable the wheels to step over bumps independently of each other. The compactness and simplified mounting of coil springs suits them ideally for front-end use. However, their frictionless qualities must be overcome to avoid bouncing. Packard uses double-acting shock absorbers for this purpose, an integral part of the wheel suspension. But now let's take a look at the rear-end suspension. How come no coil springs here? Well, rear-end suspension is a different problem. Because of the rear axles, the differential, the housing, and the propeller shaft, unsprung weight is necessarily high. The extra weight of torque arms and linkage necessary when coil springs are used increases the unsprung weight even more. One manufacturer even mounts shock absorbers on the brake plate, making the unsprung weight even greater. 
The greater unstrung weight of the rear end requires much more shock absorbing action to reduce bouncing. Frictionless coil springs only increase the problem. Packard has the finest possible solution with Safety Flex triple control springs. They carry their own built in shock absorbers. Under light load, only the long spring leaves are brought into action. Live rubber inserts between them keep friction at a minimum for a floating ride over small road irregularities. Under medium loads, or on rougher roads, the intermediate leaves come into play. Special silenite inserts increase the spring friction to provide greater shock absorbing action. And under heavy loads, lead and antimony inserts add their greater friction to further snub the spring action. So you can see that these springs provide snubbing action according to the load. They are absolutely silent, weatherproof, and designed to require no lubrication. Another feature that contributes to smooth riding is Packard's hot kiss drive. In this type of drive, forward or backward motion is transmitted from the axle through the springs. This results in smoother start and less tire wear. Important, too, is the fact that the Hotchkiss drive is lighter in unsprung weight, contributing to even better, smoother ride. It's not burdened by the extra weight of torque tubes, arms, or linkage. In addition to the Hotchkiss drive and triple control spring action, we use two airplane type shock absorbers mounted at an angle to control both vertical and sidewise movement of the frame and body. They're direct acting too, without any linkage to rattle and thump. Then there's the fifth shock absorber, which further cushions sidewise road shocks from the body. It contributes substantially to Packard comfort and stability, particularly on curves. But let me tell you more about the front end. Front end? I thought we'd finished with that. No, sir. This chassis is brimful of quality features, which every salesman should know. You've just seen the fifth shock absorber at the rear end. Now, here at the front end is the roll control bar. It keeps the body on a more even keel. The result is greater safety and comfort when rounding curves. Packard's true course steering linkage means greater driving comfort, too. It minimizes the transmission of road shocks to the steering wheel, resulting in far more restful driving. Here's another Packard superiority. Packard steering knuckles don't pivot on ordinary bushings as in some cars. The top bearing is a needle roller type. The lower one consists of a ball thrust bearing for carrying the weight and a bronze bushing for the radial load. The combination makes for effortless, ageless ease of steering. And to make Packard steering even more effortless, we've increased the steering gear ratios this year. But here, I'd like to show you the new Velvet Power Flow Clutch. It's simpler, has fewer parts, and gives smoother start and easier operation. Sounds like a good sales story. This one-piece cushion spring, for instance, replaces the separate springs in the old clutch. It's simplified, and it performs better, too. The spring forms little humps in the clutch lining. When the clutch first starts to take hold, the starting friction takes place between these little humps and the pressure plate. This small area of friction gives velvet smooth start without grabbing or chatter. Then, when the clutch is fully engaged, the cushion spring is squeezed flat, allowing the full lining area to bear against the pressure plate for positive transmission of power. As in the past, Packard uses centrifugal weight that increase the clutch pressure in proportion to engine speed. With the weight helping the main spring, the springs can be made lighter. This reduces clutch pedal pressure for easier operation. That's why we call it the Velvet Power Flow Clutch. Not only does it give velvet smooth starts, it operates with a lighter pressure. Of course, it's generously ventilated for long life and the relief bearing lubricant is sealed in permanently. Well, that is impressive. Now, how about the transmission? Well, our Unimate transmission is smooth and silent in every speed, not just in second and third, but in first, too. Well, look, are all Packard features the best, or is this just part of the sales talk? Actually, Packard's superiority is no sales talk. It's based on fact. Take the transmission, for instance. It has a long-life feature 
you won't find on any other car regardless of price. Most manufacturers use five ball or roller bearings in the transmission. Some use six. But Packard uses nine. That's a fact. That's pretty convincing. Take the gears themselves as another example of Packard thoroughness. They're carburized to produce a glass-hard wearing surface on the outside only. The insides remain tough to withstand impact loads and shocks. The overdrive here reduces engine speed 27 and 8 tenths percent for increased engine life, better gas and oil economy, and more restful highway cruising. Yes, overdrive is really smooth. It's a good selling feature. I like it too. Wouldn't drive a car without one. But there are many other features in a Packard that contribute to the smooth flow of power to the rear wheels. Packard propeller shafts, for example, are three inches in diameter for greater stiffness and freedom from whip. They're balanced at rest and in motion to eliminate vibration. We use roller bearings in the universal joints. The lubricant is sealed in for life, and dirt and water are sealed out. So you can see that these Packard features are not selling features as such, but rather are a means to an end. And that end result is a motor car chassis as perfect as human minds and hands can make it. Yes, you see, we have always been searching for new and better ways of doing things. We've done a lot of pioneering for the industry. Our high point rear axle is a good example of that. Packard owners enjoy the lower center of gravity, the quieter operation, and longer life of the hypoid rear axle about 10 years before other manufacturers recognized its advantages and copied it. So experience and research qualify Packard to build the best hypoid axle today. In addition, the new axles now have lower gear ratios to utilize the greater power of the new engine. That means the engines turn over slower for long life and better gas and oil economy. But Packard's superior ability to perform brilliantly and smoothly for life is only excelled by its ability to stop safely and surely at the slightest brake pressure. We use centrifuge brake drums. That's a steel shell for lightness and strength with a lifetime cast iron braking surface fused inside to ensure safe, dependable stops through the years. When the brakes are applied, the front view grips the drum and pushes against this linkage, which in turn presses the other shoe against the drum. This is called servo action because it helps the driver apply the brakes. The servo, or front shoes of each wheel, are lined with a superior wear-resisting material to get the exact desired servo action and long brake life. We've engineered special brake lining for the front shoes, which is different from that used in the back shoes. That's how thoroughly these brakes are engineered. And believe me, you've never driven a car with brakes that stop so quickly, so smoothly, and so surely with the lightest pedal pressure. The pedal action doesn't fade or change. It keeps that safe Packard feel for life. Tell me, are these tires larger than the ones you used to use? No, they're the same size. But the new wider rims make them appear larger. These new rims shape the tire for flatter, better road contact. The sidewalls are straighter for less flexing, less heat, and longer life. The wide base rim support makes the tires more firm on curves, reducing side sway. And the same size tire on these rims actually holds more air, giving greater comfort. So, you see, those are the high spots of the new chassis. We could talk for hours and still not give you the complete story. That's how big it is. You'll find further proof of the excellence of Packard engineering, of the long life, durability, and dependability built into the Packard chassis in the 1948 fact book. You'll find quality features that may surprise you. Well, I imagine one thing that wouldn't surprise me is the cost of this chassis. I guess you spent about a million dollars developing it. Yes, again. The research, development, and engineering run closer to three million dollars. But that is...
is in keeping with the Packard tradition of building the finest quality motor cars. Just ask the man who owns one.